Super Petrel 100 is a light amphibious aircraft initially designed in France in the 1980s. The project was improved over and over in Europe until it was purchased by a Brazilian aeronautical company, then called EDRA, today Skoda Aeronautics. In Brazil, the development continued, with further improvements being made, including a new hull shape that is responsible for its excellent handling characteristics in the water. The Super Petrel 100, the one we're testing today, was eventually replaced in production by the Super Petrel LS, which is still being built and which is not the subject of this report. The aircraft has an unusual configuration. It's a biplane, it's a pusher, and it has no flaps. The lower wings are smaller than the upper wings and help preventing water spray from reaching the propeller blades. Also, the lower wings are designed with a slightly higher angle of incidence than the upper ones. So when the lower wings are approaching a stall, the upper wings are still flying and the aileron control is maintained at very low speeds. Its wings span 29.2 feet, 8.9 meters and it's 19.6 feet, 5.98 meters long. As the name of the airplane suggests, the engine, a Rotax 912S, produces 100 horsepower. It's mounted on top of the upper wing, facing aft. You check the coolant and the oil through designated holes on the cowling. The airplane we tested was equipped with an r propeller, a three-bladed composite unit from France. The Super Petrel 100 has a ballast system, so whenever total weight in the cockpit is less than 140 kilos, 308 pounds, a certain amount of weight in the form of water has to be loaded on the nose. To eliminate the ballast, you open this valve and the water drains into the hull so that you can easily get rid of it with the use of the bilge pump operated through a switch on the panel. The airplane holds 80 liters, 21.2 gallons of fuel in two tanks that are located behind the seats. There are no fuel selectors and no shutoffs. Managing fuel is a matter of simply making sure there is enough of it on board. To drain the tanks, there's a pump that forces fuel out the drain valve under the lower right wing. Okay then, let's get inside. The cockpit is not particularly roomy, but it's not uncomfortable. In strong turbulence, the very tall might occasionally bump their head on the plexiglass. Leg and shoulder room are not a problem. You fly with your right hand on the stick when seated on the left side. Trim is activated through a switch on the left side stick. Landing gear operation is mechanical through this lever between the seats. It says land and water on the lever. And there's also a pair of lights on the panel to remind you not to try a water landing with gear down or a runway landing with the gear up. The baggage compartment is small, just this shelf behind the seats. An oar is a useful feature on an airplane like this. Okay now, clear prop. The airplane's fuselage is made of reinforced fiberglass and the tail boom is carbon fiber over PVC. Wings and control surfaces are aluminum tubing covered in dope and fabric.
Steering on the ground is by differential braking. We calculated 800 feet to 140 meters for takeoff. That with two adults on board and full tanks. We climbed with a little less than full power and saw around 500 feet per minute while indicating 70 miles per hour. Then we leveled off at 4,500 feet and set 5,000 RPMs. We had a VSI that was 100 feet per minute off, but we made sure the altimeter was pegged at 4,500 and then observed a 90 miles per hour IAS. At 4,500 feet, with a QNH of 1023 HPAs, 30.20 inches of mercury, and 20 degrees Celsius, 68 Fahrenheit at that altitude, we calculated 98 miles per hour of tour speed. That's 85 knots. When we set wide open throttle, the indicated airspeed went deep into the yellow arc, stabilizing at around 100 IAS, which amounted to 109 miles per hour, 95 knots tour speed. Now let's head for the really fun part. Flying is certainly one of the best, most delightful things a person can do. So when you're up there on a good day flying a well-working little airplane and still look forward to the really fun part, that's gotta be something special. Well, special it is. Landing and taking off from the water is really something else. If you love flying like we at Fly and Tell do very much, you'll love the challenge, the feeling of freedom. And if you're a boat guy or an outdoors person or someone who just enjoys seeing beautiful things, then a flying boat should really be on your list. It's a good number to be on short final at 60 to 70 miles per hour. But because the airplane has no flaps and because it bleeds off speed promptly, there is no need to precisely nail speeds on approach. Just make sure the gear is up for water landings. See the blue light on the panel. We splashed on this lake and strolled around for a bit. It's almost therapeutic. The maneuverability in the water is outstanding. There are several videos on the internet that show what a well-trained pilot can safely do with his super patrol machines. Takeoff roll is obviously longer from the water. Still, it's an impressive performance and I can't stress this enough. It is a blast.
The Super Petrel 100 is not a fingertip flying machine. It is very stable in all axes and roll control is a bit on the heavy side. We've once flown a Super Petrel 100 with iron spades installed by Brazilian engineer Pedro Melo. The effect was quite positive, with roll control noticeably lighter. But even without the spades, the Super Petrel 100 is a delight to fly. Yes, it's a bit heavy in roll control, but it's quite responsive. And after a while you get used to it. And it does not compromise the fun of flying this versatile machine. We make sure that the gear is down and proceed to land. As an airplane, the Super Petrel 100 is quite fun. It flies well, it's extremely docile, goes 85 knots every day and has great ramp appeal. As a boat, it's probably just as fun, or maybe a little more so. There's just no way not to love this aircraft. It is as much fun as one can have while keeping your wings on. Thank you for watching this fly and tail flight review. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel and thank you very much. On our next episode, we'll show you another aircraft, then we'll fly it and tell you all about it.